So hello to anyone tuning in. Here is our two for one special, you might say. We have, here is the 07 Cobalt, tough old girl, ran her three times. Probably could run her again, you know, different couple things on the back, drop the tank, uh, put the derby tank inside. But this one, we were having so much uh, issue because I put the core support through. Uh, you can see there the damage that remains if you watch the other videos. Uh, we use the plastic air intake off of the 05 Cobalt, which is there, have the tarp over it to keep the rain out. We had some rain here recently. Uh, and it worked well enough, didn't idle well, but ran and ripped good, still <laughs> ran and ripped. But you can see it It uh, has a pretty beat up bent uh, tie rod in the passenger side. As I said, the motor, while still running great, uh, that air intake, you know, we have one good air intake and it was already not running great. So this old girl, maybe we could throw it in, but we are gonna part her out and onto that old girl. Now this one, again, I threw in real quick. You can see it's got the pre-run in the back, but what we're gonna do, this one, the control arms, which here you'll see are super clean, especially for a Cobalt. The Cobalts I've had, I swear they rust so bad in that control arm, if not right in the frame. Well, this one's super clean. So we're gonna take the control arms off of this one. And the only thing, this old girl, it actually has the strut, uh, the spindle. So it's actually not aluminum on this one. Uh, shout out to Lucas. It is off of one of his Cavaliers and uh, pretty much the same setup with the Cobalt and the Cavaliers but the control arms were super weak on this one. So I threw it in the pit real quick, just to kind of see if I could maybe get lucky, get down to the end, have some fun. Ran for a while, but ultimately I got pressed into, and that driver's side, uh, passenger side, wasn't as bad, and still the wheels just turned in a little bit. Still holding on, but this driver's side, again, it was, it was like butter right inside there. It's kind of hard to see with the light, get it to focus. So there you can see it broke, pulled the CV shaft out, and that's kind of what we thought to do. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna take the control arms off of this guy. So I'm gonna pull the wheels, uh, break loose, watch the video, it seems pretty simple. Uh, break everything loose we need to, and then we're gonna unbolt the, right here, the bolt that's holding in. It's kind of hard to see, right there it is. So we're gonna unbolt that bolt, which is holding in our ball joint. And then we're gonna unbolt the two bolts there where it bolts to the frame, as well as the one underneath going up in and should come off pretty simple, uh, hopefully. <laughs> Never usually that simple. Uh, but that's that control arm, so he's good to go. Do the same on the other. And once we get the control arms on and everything goes back together, that uh, CV shaft on the passenger side here pulled out, but it really is fun. It just kind of popped out because of the condition of that, uh, that control arm break in and just in essence the wheel was the wheel was almost straight this way in the pit whenever it ripped so it just that those cv shafts pop right out unless you're someone that like some people weld little plates on the inside of the boot uh technically not something that's legal but if you weld a little plate on the inside of the boot that boot it's going to keep hitting that cv shaft is inside the boot and stay in there well we're not that sophisticated so here goes nothing never done this before never changed the control arm but you know that car and if you watch the build earlier we uh actually changed the the spindle the strut and everything it was actually off of this car uh before i got it off a of buddy and uh that's what we're gonna do so two for one special again that old girl probably has some life left but the frame's so beat up and turned in the back it's pressed pretty tight i could put a bar in there and run it but with this one here just needing the control arms and we're already using the air intake off of this one on that one we're gonna just take off of this and throw onto that so here goes nothing wish us luck we'll see how it goes so here we are with the tire off and just to show on the video online they broke this big guy here uh loose to kind of back pressure off we're not gonna do that at least to start we're just going to again unbolt that right there Get a second. and if if it'll just lower itself down a tiny bit to where after I break those loose, again, the two here, which this piece here, we definitely want to keep uh, on both sides there. And then again, the bolts up underneath and then it should just slide that control arm out of it's kind of like in between the, what is it, the frame and the uh, bottom of the car there, but uh, should be it. So that's the, that's the mindset. We're going to see if we can get it out that easily. Might have to break this loose. But again, everything else we're leaving being, or leaving be that is, and you can see how bad that 
that guy is it's actually impressive that it held on long enough for a good time so that's the plan and how about that that is our control arm uh, i got the centerpiece there just slides right out use the uh, torque wrench to pull on that guy he had quite a bit but the front two here and the same thing with the one that was holding in the the end here uh pretty easy just basic socket and then i did use this guy uh, or you know a screwdriver flathead would have worked but put it in between uh where the ball joint was there to tap and just kind of separates it a tiny bit and the ball joint dropped right out and then i just pulled it out uh, didn't even have to loosen up the wear or anything although i think we're going to take that off because this is the uh, cv shaft i put on the car actually off of this one uh so it's got the you know just the aluminum spindle this one has as i mentioned the the uh, cavalier so it's steel and steel not aluminum for the spindle but uh, we'll keep that cv shaft so that we can possibly use it if we need it in the future but yeah uh, hopefully they they all come off like that and uh, go on this the same and again these little caps here they say to keep uh it's kind of like a washer so they just sit see this one is the right one so they just sit like that probably for spacing so this is the right one the left one's on there but yeah pretty simple nicely done hopefully they are like that so how about that there are our control arms the passenger side that's just grease from the cv shaft the one boot was a little damaged and leaked out grease and then here is the driver's side and you can see they are as clean as i've ever seen a control arm on a cobalt 10 plus years old and i've had four of them so <laughs> clean as i've ever seen so yeah we're gonna take the last couple parts off the front here that we can reuse that's ours before we scrap her and uh see if we can get these guys off the other one and on to this old girl so we're gonna start with the one that's really beat up here i'm just gonna jack it up get my ramps out of there but jack it up and turn a little bit over to the side so I can get the wheel off and then we'll get that guy unbolted and off and hopefully it comes off as easy as the uh, 2007 Cobalt did. Those things came off pretty simple. I had the big tool for the uh, one underneath. This one I didn't even need it for, referring to the torque wrench. So yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty knock on wood, pretty, uh, pretty simple process. So here we go on to the next one hopefully it works just as well and just a close up here on the driver's side of this 2005 cobalt we're throwing the parts off the red 07 on you can see boot not damaged there referring to the inside part the clip i'm going to put a new clip over it uh, just so it helps hold that kind of rubber boot over top of the uh, big metal boot there uh, but doesn't seem to be any damage and whenever you look at the I don't know exactly what they're called, but the inside there, those guys don't seem to get any damage at all. Again, as soon as I felt it, I thought I might have lost it. Changed gears once. I said, nope, broke the stick. So didn't get hit again, but you can see again, these uh, control arms, in particular on these Cobalts, uh, but just in general, uh, <laughs> if they're rusted at all here, again, I didn't even get hit. I got like bumped into, I kind of got sandwiched on each side. So I couldn't escape and the guy just kind of pushed into my wheel and it just like butter cut through there but they were bad rusted out on this side so we're going to take that guy off and you'll notice if you're someone that knows uh cavalier or well cavaliers and uh, cobalts cobalts usually have the aluminum spindle which of course isn't as tough this strut and this spindle is off of a cavalier this actually whole brake caliber and everything uh, the guy got it off of Lucas. He had a set of these and he threw them on. I actually used the uh, passenger side uh, stock spindle and uh, strut and everything on my Red 05 one whenever I busted it up the first time. So hoping this one comes off. Again, same thing. We'll take that garbage off, unbolt underneath there. And then uh, he put a new, uh, new um, uh, ball joint there. And you'll see a little bit different of a setup just unbolt it there on top and then she should slide off and we'll put the new one on so that is the damage the other side's not as bad rusted but we're going to change it as well so here goes nothing so here we are with our control arms and we have successfully gotten through the process so just wanted to show uh, how i'm doing it so again this is the driver's side control arm off of the uh, car i'm gonna run the 2005 cobalt you'll see the end 
it has bolted down to where normally it's kind of hard to see it's really greasy you can see how it's like like welded like it's one piece there for the for the ball joint to the control arm but this guy you can see because it's it's got the uh, spindle and strut off of a cavalier uh lucas and buddy i got it off of he uh he used a plasma cutter i think cut out those and then bolted that ball joint on because you see the difference in size between that one to this one which is on the cobalt this one's almost twice as big so this does not fit on the spindle that the cavalier is using so what i did took our grinder and then just our titanium bolt so and i'll do this one now i just went and ground down just kind of eating through the metal to get it smooth trying not to damage the control arm at all and get it smooth did all three don't think it matters i actually did uh the top first but i mean they're pretty much the same but i did them and i actually did it because i didn't want to damage the control arm so i did it here i wasn't planning on using the ball joint again i'll actually show you so here is how clean it came off so that's a cobalt ball joint again it was like this and i just ate across that bolt with the grinder and then I just took a little chisel or a flathead screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, excuse me, got in between underneath and it in essence popped right off. And then I just flipped over to the other side and it had the bolts on that side. So instead of getting them out, I just took the titanium drill bit and carefully went straight down through the center of it. And it went through and then it just kind of popped out. This one here, I didn't touch it. You can see there's the tip that used to be there. It just kind of popped out after I went through. So gonna unbolt that. And this is the driver's side. Might have to widen the holes a little bit to fit those bolts. Uh, and then that driver's side control arm should be good to go. And then this is the passenger side. I'll do the same thing. So success, wasn't sure if it was gonna work, but pretty simple with the grinder and the power tool. So hindsight is 2020. Whenever you're using a cobalt, for example, a control arm and a not cobalt, uh, ball joint it's obviously going to have a different hole displacement so don't drill through the old holes for the cobalt ball joint because it's not going to be the same <laughs> so as you can see i had to widen this one a little expand this one and this one a little uh, but should still be able to have a, a good strong piece there at the end and uh, she bolts right in there so just gonna bolt them on and then we're gonna throw it together so just a quick look as we believe we have successfully gotten on everything back together. Uh, we've used the torque wrench to get that big guy up in there. He was a little tricky. I had to use this jack, get under the ball joint to press the shock so that that kind of leveled out because it's got a little bit of a slope to it. Uh, just had these bolts on the frame, uh, not all the way in, about two thirds of the way in. Got that lined up, tighten it up, tighten these guys up. The boot you can see, uh, one, I'll tuck this around and tape it, even though it shouldn't be an issue like that, but just clean it up. But uh, I got the top on good, the bottom it's kind of sticking out, but the boot's just kind of protecting, if you'll let there, the, the wheel and this control arm's what's really keeping that CV shaft in there, so that shouldn't be an issue. But uh, yeah, uh, look under here, the bolts went on good. I put big washers on each of the three, you can kind of see there. But that one in good, I'll put a pin through that, just kind of tighten it down. But I believe we have it. So I'm gonna put the wheel on and uh, drive her into the shed and uh, then do the other one here. But I think we got her. So here is our final look at our little bit busted up, but still we think has a lot of life left in her 2005 Chevy Cobalt. So you can see the paint design. The kids did the car just like a sponge and a loofah, things they shower with. They're cheap. And they uh, took the leftover paint we have and just kind of dabbed around the car. Dad did this, just made a little uh, stencil of apples and drew a big apple. The Big Apple Smash is the Derby's name, they're calling it. Apple Fest, again, this is Franklin, PA. That is when, or that is what the Derby is taking place during. So it's just outside of Franklin Rocky Grove and it's their 40 years, our 40th year of doing Apple Fest. So just a little decal there, you know, didn't want to leave it the, it's like a brown. I spray painted the door white the first time I ran it. And then the wheels, I just took some spray paint too. So there's a, you know, as it's spinning, you can see the wheel 
spinning from the stands and sometimes they say that helps with the uh best pain but yeah it's a uh, a solid car ended up being able to completely change out the control arm of the uh, driver's side here which was all busted up if you saw the first time i just put a little tape around the uh, uh not gasket but the the uh Oh shoot, what are those called? A C, is it a C-clamp? I can't remember what it's called, but uh, to tighten down just with a screwdriver. And then I just put tape around it because it was a little bit long, the excess. Uh, so this control arm is solid. It is like new. And if you saw, again, the other one, it is super clean. Now, this one over here, unfortunately, is the same one. And it is a little weak. You can see right there, there's a little hole there to begin with, but it's a little rusted out around it. Not nearly as bad as the other one was, which whenever I ran this at Jamestown, just got pushed into a little and it ripped it apart. However, this right wheel, as well as that little bit of the frame behind it, Hetrick, shout out to him. He uh, pins it to win it, uh, but his old man put a lick on that door. But that wheel, I am gonna have to watch. But rest of the car, it is ready to go. Again, have a uh, shout out to Lucas. That's his derby tank. I'll give it back to him after we run her here. Just bolted down there. Again, my battery box. And uh, have the wiring directly to where the terminal hooks up running uh, the fuel pump. So that, as soon as I put the terminals on, she is pumping fuel. And you can see again, the dash is cleared out. That's not normally how I do it. You can see, I just put a little spray foam around uh, that uh, bunch of fuses there that are really important. I tied it down, put a little spray foam around it just to make sure it doesn't move. Uh, uh, fuse pops out or maybe gets broke. So that should be all right. And again, the back, you know, took a little bit of pushing in the back at Jamestown, but there is a lot of car left. So runs good. These little 2.2 Ecotec motors, uh, they're pretty sought after. A lot of people seem to like them, and they're a good little derby motor. Uh, runs good. It's just this right wheel. Uh, the reason why I wasn't able to change it, I have the control arm off of, again, it's over there, the red one. The bolts, so the two bolts out here got off. They were a little bit torqued or torqued, tightened down, if you will, but uh, perfectly fine. But the one underneath that goes up could not break. Bought different spray from AutoZone, tried to break it loose, get it on the grooves. Uh, even used a heavy-duty air hammer and it just will not give and i was starting to get to the point where i was like man i don't want to mess it anymore because i'm likely to bust the whole kind of piece here and then if it's busted up in there well i can't gonna be able to tighten it down that's gonna be a problem so we're gonna run her again today is october 7th the last derby kind of a cleanup derby as they call it but this is her so under the hood again same setup we have the radiator looped this core support was busted again i believe it hit a deer uh, looped it last time, ran great. Again, that little piece is what you need to have a little excess pressure and perhaps water to run out. Water and then a little bit of uh, the fabric softener is all that we'll do in that. Seems to work great. So a little bit of an issue with the brakes. I don't know. I'm leaking somewhere brake fluid, but I cannot figure out where. So the brakes are all the way at the end. I'm going to fill it up again with uh, brake fluid whenever we get there. hope that helps a little bit. The e-brake does work, but... Uh, it only grabs this back wheel and it's not going to fully stop me. So I might be stopping myself in Ford and reverse. So never ran at this place. It's new this year. They built it Rocky Grove again, just outside of Franklin PA, but it uh, was a good looking pit. Haven't had much rain at all. A little bit of rain. It is definitely fall. It is a uh, high of like 51 today and there's rain coming in after the Derby starts. So hoping to have some fun, hoping that this car is finished up, maybe down, get some hardware, have a good time at the end. There will definitely be some good derby drivers in the four cylinder. So this is her. We'll see how she does.